What are we going to talk about today, Harrison? So that it's Christmas and I and I have a Christmas calendar chain link and I want to get to Christmas, but I can't actually even know how many days. And and I always like my mom because my mom is so sweet Aww. and I want to hug her so much and I'm going, <laughs> I'm going I love you to too, go baby. and I want to play Wii with my brother, so goodbye. Good morning, YouTube. I am here to talk to you today about how to do Christmas at the request of a few of you viewers who liked my how to do Thanksgiving video. Holidays can be very complicated. Even for those we used to call worldly people. Because shit happens to everyone. After all, Carson, Car yes, I love you too. Yeah. For extra Jehovah's Witnesses, though, Christmas, above all other holidays, is really probably the big one. It's the most difficult. If you were born in, it's probably the one you most wanted to celebrate as a kid. I know I did. It's also probably the one you receive the most guilt trips about. There can be a lot of angst associated with celebrating it, and then also with fearing that you don't know how to celebrate it correctly. Part of our problem with all holidays is that we have no real life comparison for them, so our only ideas about Christmas particularly are based on holiday shaming from the witnesses and Hallmark movies, neither of which are particularly accurate. Obviously, Christmas has religious significance to some people. Others, including myself, not so much. Even some of my fellow atheists don't celebrate Christmas because they don't believe in the religious side of it, but my view is that it's not a holiday about Jesus anyway, not really. It was Saturnalia first, after all. I celebrate it because I always wanted to, because it's fun, and because my kids love it. It's so awesome to watch their little eyes light up. It's it's amazing. And presents are great, it's true, but it's it's about more than that. It's the food and the lights and the tree. I can watch my kids enjoy the heck out of the holidays and I imagine what it would have been like for me and for my sister if we had been allowed to do the same. It's magical. It's magical on so many levels. So I love making presents with mommy because that was fun and I wow. made some of daddy's presents. Yeah, we got some presents. So my sister and I used to get in trouble for singing Christmas songs that we learned in school to the point where we would actually sneak and do it. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was our favorite Christmas song. I've told you that story before. And my sister tells me that she used to pretend and daydream that we celebrated Christmas, which kind of makes me sad in a way um, because it's harmless and it is so fun and we would have had such a great time. What if you want to start celebrating but you don't feel entirely comfortable with it? Well, first, you have to understand that nothing bad is going to happen to you just because you celebrate or don't celebrate. It's just a fun holiday and it's nothing more than that. There's a little deprogramming involved with celebrating for the first time, though. You have to get past the baggage that you may have from the witnesses over pagan origins and who might see the lights on your house or, or whatever. Now, I believe in going big, obviously. So I celebrate out loud, and I don't care who sees it. Your situation might be different, so do what's comfortable for you. You can start small. I mean, you could start with a Christmas tree or even just a Santa hat of your very own. Christmas decorations are cheap and readily available. You can even make your own if you're feeling crafty, and that might be a really fun thing to do with kids. Christmas cookies are also fun to make and delicious, and there are tons of public events that might be fun and don't require a lot of work or money from you. Local tree lightings can be really cool, as well as Christmas parades. Around here, they have a 5K foot race through a neighborhood here in town where they have a tradition of making these light balls and hanging them from the trees. It's really cool to drive through that neighborhood and look at the lights, but running the race is a little bit pricey and exercise-y. Might help counteract those seven dozen cookies we baked this weekend, though. Let's say that you just have your nuclear family and you're freshly out celebrating 
maybe with your children for the first time. Depending on the age of your kids and the exposure to the witnesses, you may want to consider counseling for your kids anyway, not, not about Christmas specifically, but just to counteract the effects of whatever brainwashing they've already endured. But most younger kids and many older kids and teens too will be delighted to be able to celebrate Christmas. Just sit them down and explain that you were wrong before and that now you know the truth and it's okay. You don't have to try to do Santa Claus if you don't want to. You definitely don't have to do the creepy elf on the shelf thing. I am not. I refuse to do that. No. You can keep it as low key as you want to. Or you can totally go nuts. It's up to you. I would offer the same advice that I did in my Thanksgiving video about being an invited guest at someone's house for Christmas. Take a host gift, be polite, offer to help, avoid discussing inflammatory topics, and be sure to say thank you. If you're celebrating all by yourself, I'd also offer the same advice about volunteering to serve Christmas dinner at a homeless shelter or something like that. Doing good for others is a great way to celebrate the holidays, especially this one. And you might make some new friends. Let's talk about decorating. First, if you're gonna be putting lights on your house, be very careful if you're climbing on the roof. Um, our house right now is a single story ranch with a two story drop on one side because of the walkout basement. Carson keeps stealing my Christmas ball. Stop stealing my Christmas ball. Stop it. It's not yours. You cannot have it. So I actually got stuck on the roof this year because I used the wrong ladder to get up there. And when I went to get down, I realized that I couldn't actually see the ladder from my vantage point on the roof because it was now under the eave. My husband was in the front yard with a leaf blower and he couldn't hear me shouting at him. So I'm following him as he's going back and forth in the yard, like on the roof. The neighbors must have thought we were crazy. And he did not have his phone with him, so I couldn't text him. And so I got to spend an extra half hour on the roof. Eventually he got the extension ladder and I got down. My kids thought it was absolutely hilarious that I was stuck on the roof. And Harrison actually announced this to his preschool class as our new family Christmas tradition. Yeah. Now I would caution you that if you have a house with a steep roof or a long drop, for example, our house in Richmond had three stories. We did not put lights on the roof there. If you want to put lights on the roof on a house like that, either pay a professional or consider lighting methods like a projector. I also recommend using LED lights because they are less expensive to operate, i.e. lower electric bills, and they dramatically reduce the risk of fire. Christmas trees. Christmas trees. Um, there are basically two options for Christmas trees, a real tree or a fake tree. There are pros and cons to both. Now, if you're doing a real tree, please, please go to an actual Christmas tree farm or a store and buy yours. I know that in Hallmark movies, they drive around looking for one in the wild and cut it down, but in real life, that's gonna get you arrested, okay? Not to mention the poor animals who might live in said wild tree or the surprising amount of work it takes to actually cut one down and drag it back to your house. The other option is a fake tree. They come in many sizes, either pre-lit or not, they can be expensive, but sometimes you can pick one up on sale or even secondhand. Whatever you choose to do, make sure that you know where you're going to put it in your house so that you get the right size. There's nothing worse than coming home with a beautiful Christmas tree and realizing that it's not going to fit in your house. Word to the wise, I've done it. There are pros and cons to both kinds of trees. If you get a real tree, they have to be watered, and they can get funky depending on how long you have your tree up. Um, they can also cause allergy issues for some people. When they dry out, they are extremely flammable. And then there's disposal at the end of the season, which in some areas can be a pain. Also, some types of trees drop an insane number of needles on your floor, which means you have to vacuum constantly. But they smell nice, and they're beautiful, and they're usually less expensive in the short term, and you don't have to store them for the rest of the year. Now, if you get a fake tree, they are reusable, they don't require watering, and they aren't usually as flammable as the real ones. They also come pre-lit, so you don't have to put lights on them, which can be a real pain in the ass with an unlit tree, because you can't get them spaced right. Our tree here is a fake pre-lit tree, and 
as you can see, one major con of these is that after a few years, your lights might start to fail and you can end up with a strip of unlit tree like we have here. Ours needs replacing. But the problem is that you have to store fake trees somewhere for the rest of the year and they take up a lot of room. So if you're short on storage space, this could be an issue. Whatever type you choose, decorating the tree is one of my favorite parts of Christmas. As I said before, you can get cheap decorations at thrift stores, the dollar store, any Walmart or Target type store. You can spend as little or as much as you want. Some people go all out. They do multiple trees. They do color coordinated trees. They do theme trees. Other people just throw any random thing they can find at their tree. The result is always beautiful. A word of caution though, if you have pets like this thing right here, like this, um, <laughs> some Christmas plants and decorations are toxic or dangerous to pets. Poinsettias are actually poisonous to dogs and cats, for example. And to a golden retriever like this, Christmas tree covered with balls is irresistible. Thus the fence around our tree right now. Children can also find the tree irresistible and will destroy your ornaments if you're not careful. Also cats. Take precautions if you have small children or pets is all I'm saying. If you have children though, the best ornaments are the ones they make. Reliving the memories every year is really cool after a while. So a few of our favorites, um, for a couple of years running we made these. No Carson, this is not a cookie. They are made of salt dough and that is Harrison's hand in 2015 when he was 21 months old. These little tiny hand. Photograph ornaments and ornaments that they make at school are awesome. This is also Harrison's. Um, ornaments that are given to you as gifts are another really cool thing. My sister actually made this for me. No, Carson, you cannot have it. And I just think it's super cool. I made these this year. They're knitted Christmas balls. And Carson really loves these. He wants to chew them, so we have to keep them away from him. The gift-giving part of Christmas is often particularly angsty for us XJ-dubs. I used to agonize over it. I really did. How much should I spend? What are people going to think if I give them this thing or that thing? Is it good enough? Is it big enough? Is it too big? You can really drive yourself nuts and overthink this. You can also go into debt unnecessarily. Don't do it. I recommend sitting down and making a Christmas budget because I love making budgets. Figure out how much you can afford to spend and then think about who you want to buy gifts for. You do not have to buy gifts for everyone you know. Also, regardless of what the gift is, the correct response when someone gives you a gift is thank you. Please teach your children this. Some people stay very minimal with gift giving. Others go all out. Just know that you are the one who's in charge of what you give. Don't put yourself in a bad financial spot here because it's not necessary. Decide on how much you want to spend and stick to that. It's really okay. I also make my gifts some years. If you have a hobby um, like knitting or crocheting or woodworking or something like that, it's a fantastic idea. A lot of people really do love handmade gifts and it shows a level of thoughtfulness and investment that um, something you buy off the shelf may not. For my colleagues at work, I make little jars of jam every year. My office does not do a secret Santa or any of that, but if your workplace does, make sure that you honor the dollar limit and play by the rules. Trust me on that. If you want to give someone a gift but you don't know exactly what they want or might like, go with something relatively small in size and useful. Stay away from really big things or living things as well as particularly personal things. Because there's nothing quite like opening a box full of racy underwear from your mother-in-law in front of the entire extended family. I know this from experience. Bless her, I love that woman. <laughs> Kids are easy to shop for because there's always something that they want or would enjoy. But a word of caution about certain types of gifts. Never, ever, ever buy a pet for anyone without their express permission. Never, ever, ever buy a pet for your own children that you don't have every intention of keeping and taking proper care of. Just don't. Get down.
down, Carson. You cannot have my Christmas ball. <laughs> you can't have it. You have your own ball. As far as opening gifts, some people open them all on Christmas Eve. Other people have everyone open one present on Christmas Eve and wait for Christmas morning for the rest. Some people only open gifts on Christmas morning. We actually don't put the presents out until Christmas Eve after the kids go to bed because if we put them under the tree before that, they'd be ripped open immediately, either by the kids themselves or by the dog. So there's also the question of Santa Claus. Now, I told the story in last year's Christmas video about my oldest son's belief that my husband actually is Santa Claus. There's still some uncertainty about Santa here, so we play it up. If you wanna do the whole Santa thing with your kids, it can be fun even if your kids actually know or suspect that Santa is not real. There's actually a website where you can upload a picture of your living room and add in a picture of Santa putting out your gifts. And it really does look very realistic. We did it a couple years ago. But I do caution you that if you're doing the whole Santa thing with your kids, keep the gifts from Santa Claus small. Take credit for the big gifts. Trust me. Your kids are going to go to school and talk about what Santa brought them. And some families that your kids might go to school with maybe can't afford for Santa to bring iPads and computers for everyone. So just be thoughtful about that. Now, in our house, when we get up on Christmas morning, we make coffee, of course, because you got to have coffee. And then um, somebody gets chosen to play Santa. And that person will sort all the gifts so that each person has their stack with their name on it. And then we will actually take turns opening them. We like to take photos and ooh and ah over each other's gifts and um, prolong the excitement. And the kids get to help Carson here open his gifts as well, since he doesn't have thumbs. Because of course I buy Christmas presents for my dog. Of course I do. There are plenty of other Christmas traditions that you can have fun with. I love watching Christmas movies with the kids. Um, my favorite is It's a Wonderful Life. We also like to go stand in the line. Well, we don't like standing in the line, but we go to the mall for pictures with Santa. Then there's the food. We make cookies, lots of them. This is my husband's favorite part of the season, especially the peanut butter cookies. For Christmas dinner, sometimes we go out. Sometimes we make a repeat of Thanksgiving dinner. Sometimes we go in a completely new direction. We haven't actually decided what we're making this year. But I'm thinking about standing rib roast, maybe. The thing is, there are many traditions that are associated with Christmas, but they're not rules, guys. You can do whatever you want in the real world. There's not any pressure. Nobody's gonna shame you for what you do or don't do. Um, it's about spending time with and showing appreciation and love for other people. So do what feels right to you. Enjoy your time off work. It's a lot of fun. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Joyous Kwanzaa, Happy Festivus, and Yo Saturnalia. Mm -hmm.